Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Seller Speak Session. We have Danny Carlson with us today. Um, Danny Carlson is an Amazon FBA entrepreneur. He set up Kenji ROI back in 2016 and he's grown his team to have more than 10 members since. Um, he Kenji ROI has helped more than 600 Amazon sellers uh, with video, product photography, Amazon SEO, copywriting, PPC management, everything. Uh, and also Kenji ROI um, has produced more than 13,000 um, uh, product listings. So Danny Carlson specializes in PPC management and listing optimization. And he's a host of um, podcasts such as Actualized Freedom Podcast and also Danny Carlson Podcast. Podcast, um, which has interviewed more than 72 people uh, with names such as Manny Coates, Steve Sims, um, and Kevin King. Um, we're really happy to have you here, uh, Danny. Oh, happy to be on here. I always love talking about Amazon and all of the fun entrepreneurial things. Absolutely. So I was reading a bit about you on your website, and um, I know you have an interesting background. Do you want to talk about what brought you to Amazon FBA? Yeah, so to be honest, it was pretty random getting into Amazon. It came from a near death experience when back when I was into longboard racing. At the time, I was just really focused on traveling the world as much as possible and competing in longboard races. And my day job was a carpenter. And I just had a big hatred for carpentry. So listening to online podcasts about different online business models was really interesting to me. But I didn't really know which one to choose. But it wasn't until I was longboard racing in the Philippines and I missed a head on collision with a motorcycle coming up the track by literally two inches, had to dive off my board to avoid a really crazy head on collision. And that just forced me to really take a look at my life directions. Like, do I want to wow. keep working as a carpenter or do I want to remove any excuses and just go start the online business? So I just got started in the world of Amazon, just kind of forced into it basically by a crazy life uh, event. Quite an in interesting uh, story there. Um, so let's dive straight into the questions. Um, so something that I keep coming across is the triple optimized Amazon listing methodology, right? Can you um, elaborate on that? Yeah, so the triple optimized Amazon listing methodology is a methodology that I have developed through my experience with Kenji ROI, right? As I mentioned in the intro, more than 1200 Amazon listings created at this point for our clients. And it is just the mixture of the three most important things to have a super maximized click through rate and conversion rate Amazon listing in a repeatable and reliable way, right? So a really basic overview of that from the high level is the three pieces, keyword optimization. I think most Amazon sellers will know something about keyword optimization. And that is one of the core foundational pieces, but you also need key info communication, which in my opinion is the one that most people just skip over or are not really putting enough attention into at all. And the third piece is persuasive desire optimization. That is basically the psychology behind why would a customer actually choose your listing over everyone else's listing? Interesting. So do you want to go a little in depth into each of these three factors or the points? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm just going to briefly touch on keyword optimization first, I think, because most Amazon sellers understand this to some degree, but the real key 80-20 of it is relevancy is more important than the volume of keywords. That's probably the biggest mistake I see people do with Amazon keywords is try to fit too many phrases into the listing. They want to rank for every possible variation. But the problem with that is that you're left with a listing that is super keyword stuff. You're just repeating information over and over again that is irrelevant and no customer is actually going to read your entire listing. And also Amazon's algorithm is not necessarily going to prioritize your listing if you have all those keywords in there. It's pretty good at determining what are the relevant keywords and search phrases for your listing as long as relevancy is really good. So it's actually to your detriment if you put in too many semi-related keywords, Amazon's algorithm might be a little bit confused and then you're not going to index as well for the, the search terms that actually are the most relevant. And a few more notes on keyword optimization. Title is the most important place. Do not forget, we always like to have three top phrases in the title or at least two if you're in one of the shorter categories and use your subject matter fields for your top phrases in exact match. So those are some keyword fields in Amazon's backend. You're gonna to have to go into 
on the keywords tab, I believe it is now, and then click the add more button four times until you have all five subject matter fields. They're all 50 character fields and you can fill them out with your top keywords in exact match. And a final note on keyword optimization, we like to put the top five phrases into at least three different text fields in exact match. So your top five phrases, whatever they are, they should be maybe in the title, bullet points and description, or maybe in your subject matter and bullet points and description. As long as they're across three fields, then there's a very low chance that Amazon is not gonna be indexing you for those phrases. And then it shows Amazon, hey, this product is really, really relevant for these phrases and uh, keeps the relevancy really high. Wow, that was super information packed and very actionable. Um, so considering that there are these three uh, ways to go about it, um, do you do a lot of A-B testing? Um, so if you have, uh, have you found any unexpected interesting results? Yeah, we have done quite a bit of A-B testing and the number one thing to A-B test is the main image on Amazon. It doesn't really make sense to split test the titles and the bullet points and everything like that just because it can really mess with keyword indexing if you're changing your listing text too much. So changing your main image is the most reliable thing to test. It's also not that reliable to test, to split test your other images as much because you don't know if the customers are even seeing that image in their decision. So you need a lot of data, like thousands and thousands of sales to really have any statistical significance. So testing the main image, we are surprised all the time with what main image is the winner. We always create at least four different variants of the main image just because it's that important. And so often the one that I think is the most attractive and will get the most clicks is not the one that gets the most clicks. It's the one that's like kind of weird and maybe just it doesn't look as attractive as the other ones to me but that's the one that gets a higher click-through rate so go figure and, and that kind of brings me to to the second part of the triple optimized amazon listing methodology that so many people will just skip over completely is key info optimization and you can work that into that main image by identifying what is the most important information about the product that a customer would need to know in order to make a sale so a really good example of that is um, well, I have in front of me here is like a, a USB mouse. It is a corded mouse. And personally, I like to have a USB mouse because uh, I'm a little woo woo and worried about like the Bluetooth and the, the radiation waves from wireless one, right? But I can show that in the main image if it clearly shows the cord coming out and I can see the tip that's a USB tip, I can instantly within a split second identify that that's a USB mouse. I don't have to go searching through the rest of the title. I don't have to go searching through, I don't have to click on the listing. I immediately know what I'm looking for and then I can click and then you know, hopefully actually buy. So that um, key info optimization number, number one, hopefully you can communicate that in your main image because that'll increase your click through rate and conversion rate. Number two should have that in the first little bit of your title not just like stuff somewhere towards the end of your title. If it's that important, if it is a really key piece of information about your product, it should be in the first tiny little bit. So people scanning on search results pages and on your sponsored ads are easily gonna see that and click on your listing. And then third, where in the rest of your images and throughout the listing, can you show that and communicate that to the customers? Because Amazon is a comparison shopping engine and I think it's 27 yeah. other products are on every single Amazon page. So if your product is not clearly showing what they're looking for, very easy for a shopper to go somewhere else and click on a competitor's listing. Absolutely. Um, so I have two questions for you in here. Uh, so the first one is, is there like a magic formula that makes um, every single listing uh, have like twice as much or 10x more conversions? Um, I mean, it's impossible absolute numbers like that because everyone is starting from a different place. Yeah. If you have images that are already pretty good, then you're probably looking at, you know, maybe a five or 10% increase in conversions would be really good. But it is possible if you only have like two or three images, it is very possible to quadruple your conversion rate or something like that. Um, the number one thing is the images. So the main images, even more so than enhanced brand content, A plus content or any of that stuff, most people are going to see the main images on Amazon. Enhanced brand content um, is now called A plus content, but a lot of people won't even see that because you have to scroll down to the bottom of the listing. Yeah. So many customers make the buying decision off the main images alone. And I always say the goal should be that a customer should be able to see everything they need to make a buying decision from the images. They shouldn't have to look at any of your bullet points. They shouldn't even have to read the title. 
if your images can show all of the key benefits of your product and all the key pieces of information, then you're going to win. So um, I just released a blog post recently about the science behind images in e-commerce. And it just quoted a bunch of different studies that I think, I think the number was the human brain can receive about 30,000 words per minute worth of information from an image. And for comparison, my reading speed is about 400 words per minute. And I'm a pretty fast reader. I've taken a couple speed reading courses and, and uh, I consider myself pretty fast. So 30,000 words per minute compared to 400. Just think about it. Our human brain has evolved to take in a, a ridiculously vast amount of information from visuals or for, you know, thousands, thousands and thousands, probably millions of years for the human ancestors. But reading has only been around for several thousand years. The written word is only several thousand years old, right? So using visuals to your advantage is the clearest way to increase the conversion rate just because of the ease that it communicates information to shoppers. Absolutely. And interestingly, that's the most um, overlooked aspect of the listing. I mean, literally, um, nobody wants to spend money on f uh, professional photography, get things done right, you know, like uh, they, they try to do it themselves, which doesn't end up looking good, but they just don't listen. Um, it's just like a constant struggle. Um, so my second question is, um, so one thing that you pointed out was uh, how changing title and bullet points, especially title, um, has an impact on the indexing and ranking, right? So um, according to you, what is, a, what is an ideal frequency of uh, title optimization or should they change the title or bullet points at all? In my opinion, if you do a good job from the beginning, you should not touch your title at all. Your bullet points are a little bit less important, but ideally you get it right from the beginning. You do your research on the front end where you do your key info optimization. You just really identify what the most important things are to feature in your listing. And then you can prioritize those for your top few bullet points and you never have to touch that again. But I understand there are certain situations too where you, you got it wrong. You thought something was more important than something else. And so you're going to have to change it later. Um, in that case, that is in my opinion, the only good reason to really mess around with your title and your bullet points. If you really do need to optimize that information again, then you can put it in the first little snippet of your title, or you can move it from your fifth bullet point up to your first bullet point. But when you're doing that, you do have to be very careful that you're not messing with the indexing of your main keywords. So whenever making a change to the title, always monitor that and really do it with discretion as well. It should be for a very good reason that you're changing the text in your listing. Over-optimizing the text is just, it's gonna get you very minimal results unless there's a very specific reason you're modifying that text. Like a, for example, if there's, um, you're just not indexing for a key term that you wanna start running in pay-per-click ads, mm -hmm. then, then you start doing it. But just to try to like optimize little conversion rate optimizations, definitely better off just only playing with the images. Interesting. Uh, speaking of images, uh, one question that I'm asked a lot is uh, about Amazon TOS. So according to Amazon rules, there are so many different things that you shouldn't do. Uh, for example, you should have a plain white background and you shouldn't have any text. Um, you shouldn't have any people in the images and things like that, right? So what is your take on that? Yeah, so first of all, it's really important to distinguish between the Amazon terms of service and Amazon style guidelines. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people get these confused. These are actually very separate things. So Amazon style guidelines are things like have the title in the format of starting with brand followed by X followed by X describing information. And low level Amazon employees will enforce this a lot of the time. Like you make a change to your listing and they'll disapprove it just based on that and they'll send you that template. You have to update your title to perfectly match this. That is a guideline. That's not against the terms of service to have a title that is not like that. And most of the time it's not in your best interest to follow those style guidelines. You might have to play yeah. along with them to get your changes pushed through, but then just go ahead and change it back later and that's fine. Um, one common point of confusion is that Amazon terms of service say that you're not allowed to have um, models and images or graphic designer text on the images. That, um, that used to be more ambiguous, but Amazon has actually updated their terms of service page for the photo specifically to say that, yes, the main image does require to be a white background with nothing else in it except for the product, but your other images is okay to have 
graphic design on them to have uh, models using the product and and other things like that they explicitly do say that now in the terms of service right um speaking of style guides um uh, the last time i checked which was like uh, maybe 15 days ago um they still had an update at any of the style guides if you look at the review date uh, it goes back as back as like 2010 so uh, there are no updated style guides for most of the categories right do you actually follow them uh, i mean i know that you don't follow them but then do you even um uh, keep it as a reference I mean, we definitely look at them. There's some there's some categories that just have very specific things like clothing and baby products are examples of there are specific requirements for those photos different from other photos. Like, um, you know, you're not allowed to have uh, swimwear for children actually use a child model, uh, you know, for obvious reasons, things like that. Um, but other than that, usually Amazon style guidelines are for the lowest common denominator. They are for a brand that has completely no idea how to list their products and it's a templated process that if they know absolutely nothing, then it's better than having no guidelines at all. But for a seller who's really trying to optimize their conversion rates and has really done their research on what is important to show to the customer and has the resources to create graphic images, lifestyle images, and all of the different things for a highly optimized listing, then the style guidelines should basically be thrown in the garbage. Right. Absolutely. Um, so coming to A plus content, there's so many different ways one can create A plus content. So um, according to you, what are some of the most common mistakes that sellers make? The number one most common mistake is not using graphic design elements on all of the images. So I very commonly will see sellers using the same photos they have in their main images and then just throwing them into A plus content and then being done with it. Um, that's bad for two reasons. One, that actually is a common reason A plus content is disapproved. Amazon doesn't like that. They explicitly say that. Um, two, if a customer sees a photo they've already seen, the brain instantly shuts off into the I've already seen this mode and is much more likely to scroll past it, right? Like same thing when you open a book to the same page you've already read, your brain just automatically skips over it. Like I've read this already, right? Um, and also, if you don't have graphic design elements or text on every single one of your images, you're just missing out on an opportunity for some branding. We always want it to look like it's the own website of the brand. Have your brand colors, your brand graphic elements on there. Call out some things with text. Whatever you're trying to get across in the text section of the A-plus content, have that main text heading actually on the image because, like I said earlier, people pay way more attention to images. They're way more likely to actually scan through the images and you're really missing a key opportunity to easily communicate the key things about the product to the customer if you're just uploading images without any additional graphics added to them. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and um, since you're also uh, an expert on product photography, um, can you probably take us through an example uh, which you think is the best, like they have best images ever kind of listing? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and so is this, do you want me to actually pull up an example or just describe one for people who are listening here? Um, so if you can pull up an example, that would be really good. Do you have one handy? Yes, I can, I can run a quick search on one. This is one. Okay. Yeah, it is. It's a good mix of lifestyle and graphic design and studio images. You need all three kinds. Um, you know, you need all three types of images to really clearly explain the key things about your product. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go over exactly the reasons why for that. I'm just going to share my screen yeah, here. Perfect. Okay. So okay. this is one of our clients. They have given us permission to put this in our portfolio. Um, so the three different types of images I mentioned, this one is the main image. This is the one that we split test to be the best. There was other ones that I thought looked more attractive and had fancier graphic reflection effects on them and everything, but this one outperformed the other ones. Um, having a pure white background, just making sure that the background is actually removed through something called a clipping path. You can get this done very cheaply with Indian contractors and stuff like that, and then replace with a pure white background. Um, otherwise, you can see Amazon itself has a pure white background. So if this is a little bit off, let's say that it's a tiny bit off from white, then it's going to have this ugly looking kind of grayness to the background. You're going to clearly see that against Amazon's pure white background. So make sure that it is pure. 
Um, and then the second image, I always like to make this one the image that gets across the most important information about the product. So whatever the most key benefits are, have that in a graphic design image on your second image. So the customer immediately, if they scroll to the second image, they can see whatever is most important about that product. So you can see here, we have some text on the screen with an image that is corresponding with each one of those benefits. And then next up, we need some images that are clearly showing the product in use. So if you're looking at the main image here, it's kind of hard to tell really how the product works. Like you can see that the bike lock is, is kind of attached to itself and there's some keys there. But if we have it like this, it very clearly shows taking up the entire image, how it mounts to the bicycle, how it's hanging off there. You can see that these are, you know, made to be mounted on a bicycle. There's a lot of information that is clearly communicated on this image without the need for any words, right? It's using the visual processing power of the brain. And then another studio image showing the functionality, right? So it's important to think too, not just getting like, I'm gonna take this product from four different angles and then those are gonna be my four studio images. Thinking about what exactly are you showing in each specific image? It, there should always be an intention for every image on your entire shot list because you only have, well, in this case, six, six slots for an image and then one video because video is a very powerful place. Um, so in this image specifically, we are showing the locking mechanism, right? So a lot of people, if they're, they're gonna buy a bike lock, they wanna make sure that it's secure. And if they understand how the lock mechanism works, they are much more likely to trust it, right? And here's another image, just really calling out the uh, a couple more main benefits, anti-picking mechanism and everything like that. And another lifestyle image. So this is actually has the model showing this how it like zoomed in on how it actually mounts to the bicycle. That is a common question about this product. You know, people are wondering, will this actually work with my bicycle? Like, can I mount this to the tube? And this is clearly showing the model doing that. Um, and this, this one has a video. This is definitely preferable. If you do have Amazon brand registry, then you can put a video in one of your main image slots. And while it is an investment to get a professional video done, it will increase your conversion rate by a good solid margin as long as the video is good quality. Wow, really cool, really cool. Um, so yeah, this gives some, uh, I mean, this helps us understand uh, clearly what you were talking about um, so far, right? About product photography, uh, different types of uh, images that a listing should have uh, and all of that. So do you have any case study that you can share with us uh, that wherein, uh, you know, you clearly saw a huge impact on conversions and click-through rate? Um, this one is actually a pretty good one. We're still kind of compiling a lot of the data, but let's see, I've got a pretty good one here. Mm -hmm. So in this example here, this client, I think they were doing, let's see, what are their, what are their sales? They're doing seven, 10, 12, 24. So over the, over the course of here, they quadrupled their revenue over the course of three or four months, went from 17.4% unit session percentage. That's what Amazon calls a conversion rate too in the business supports for those of you who don't know, um, up to a 28%. So that is a really, really big, really, really big conversion rate increase. Um, so to do some math on that, if you were to sell $50,000 worth of a product and you increase your conversion rate by 2%, then that would result in $10,000 extra revenue. So it doesn't take a whole lot to really stack that up. Um, another one of these examples, um, this one is from copywriting actually. This one is a 7.46% conversion rate increase uh, from the date that full listing copywriting was implemented here. So it is always good to track this. If you guys are making major changes to your listing, mark that date and then make sure that you you know, at least on a monthly basis, take a look at that. I mean, you can over optimize this too. a weekly basis is probably good in the beginning just to really see if it is working or not. And if you might need to revert it if something really bad happened, but look at it more on a monthly basis, one month later and one month before, what kind of effect did it have on your conversion rate? And then from there, you can make better decisions on what kind of, uh, what kind of optimizations you can do to improve even more going forward. Yeah, definitely. Have you used the um, A-B testing feature on A-plus content? Expect your manage, um, expect, I, I forgot the name of the feature. Um, uh, um, A-B testing with Amazon A-plus content descriptions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah correct. 
Yeah, I mean, while it is possible, it's not a great candidate for A-B testing just because a very small percentage of customers are actually going to see the A plus description. So you just need a very large amount of data for that to be statistically significant, right? So like a lot of customers, they click the listing, they look at the photos, they buy or they don't buy, right? Only the most hardcore customers look at the photos, scroll down to the HTML description, you know, scroll down to the views again, back up to the photos. Um, and if some people, if some people actually read the description, like you just don't know how much people are interacting with it. There's no software like Hotjar or something like that that you can install on your website yeah. where you're actually confirming people are looking at that part of the description. So um, the only way to really monitor that, in my opinion, is to look at your overall listing conversion rate before and after your A plus content. Um, like if you don't have it before and then if you do have it after, then you can kind of see what's going on. But as far as A-B testing, you're probably looking at like, you know, monthly before and afters. So you make right. a big change to it and then look at the following months worth of data compared to the previous months. If there was a significant change, then maybe you can attribute it to the A plus content, but like I wouldn't, I wouldn't really trust that data. Interesting. Um, I'm guessing you'd say the same about Amazon brand analytics, the conversions and click throughs as well, right? Because it could be a small sample size. Exactly. I mean, every, all data is good data um, that, you know, we, like use all the data and take a look at it, but just realize like it's always important to think about where that data is coming from and how reliable it is too. So in the example I just gave with, you know, the description, you just got to understand Amazon shopper behavior that not all Amazon shoppers are going to read the description. So can you attribute the increased unit session percentage or the decrease in sales to that? Um, probably not. Right. So you always got to use a little discretion with this stuff. Absolutely. So uh, I'm done with my questions, Danny. I think it was a very informative, uh, very good session. I'm sure like our listeners uh, have learned a lot. Um, and uh, so thank you so much for coming on to our show again. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you here. I really appreciate it. And if you guys want to reach out to me, always happy to, um, to do that. I'm on all the social medias. I am Danny Carlson or uh, can reach out to the listing optimization team at KenGROI.com there. And they do, um, they do really good listing audits for anyone who, anyone who asks, no obligation there. Awesome. Uh, and thank you for viewing. If you like this video, do give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We'll be back with another very good video on seller, on seller Speak session soon. So stay tuned until then. Thank you and goodbye.